Number one this week in 1984, Lionel Richie with Hello. And we say hello to someone who's just released her first album in five years. It's called Still On My Mind. Dido is here with me. Do you like that? I did. It's clever, Thank huh? you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sounds of the 80s. Uh, no, thank you for having me. So you're a Christmas baby, born December 71. Yes. Not good for Christmas presents, is it? No, no. But, you know, it's cool because you feel like the whole world is celebrating your birthday. Is it true you have an official birthday as well? Yeah, no, that was like, it didn't last long. Like, it didn't? No, as a kid, I'd sort of have a birthday halfway through the year. And, uh, but no, everyone forgot that eventually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, you, you grew up and you were in your teens in the 80s. I was, yeah. yeah. So very influential for you? Hugely influential. I think it's sort of like a huge influence on, on everything I've ever done. Just sort of, you know, the, and that's when I first started going to gigs. And, you know, I was... Um, yeah, that thing when you're sort of 12, 13, 14, and you're going to all your first concerts and it was just, and that's what I loved doing. That's sort of all I did. Who are your earliest musical heroes? So my first gig was uh, Tears for Fears. Oh, yeah, <laughs> not a bad gig to be the yeah, first that was one. just brilliant. And um, uh, then I queued all night for Wham! The Final. Yeah, I was out there. <laughs> I was there. In a sleeping bag. Yeah. I, I hosted it. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> there <you go. laughs> Another hero. And um, yeah, so um, everything, Duran uh, uh, Duran, Spandau Ballet, Paul Young, I used to go to every single show he had here. And um, yeah, so I just, and, and then I used to sort of go to Brixton Academy a lot and see a lot of the sort of, you know, big reggae artists. I just liked going to gigs. It was just what I loved. Your first song that we're going to play is uh, by the Queen of Disco, Donna Summer. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, a brilliant song. Why this? State Just of Independence. An amazing song. Just amazing. Um, I remember um, me and my brother first hearing it. So we used to sort of sit in his room and listen to music and, and just, you know, we had sort of slightly different tastes, but we also loved, loved a lot of the same stuff. And I just remember when we both heard that song, we didn't really know what it was about, but it just didn't matter. <laughs> and um, that's just brilliant. And the choir on it, which I found out later, actually, when I was making the third album in Ocean Way in, in LA, and that's where it, there were all these pictures of it being recorded. And that's where... I think Quincy Jones had got like this big choir of like Michael Jackson and all these people in the choir singing. It's just a it's a feel, it's just a feel song because I still can't work out what it's about. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll have a look at the video now. This is Donna Summer and State of Independence. Written by John Evangelis and as Dido said, produced by Quincy Jones and featuring an all-star backing choir that included Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Dionne Warwick and a pre-fame Reynolds Girls. Okay, maybe not the last one. Uh, <laughs> State of Independence. Such a great song, isn't it's it? It's just brilliant. It just, I, st I never get bored of that song. I still listen to it now. It just puts me in a really good mood. So you have a new album out. I do. Still on my mind. Uh, first album in five years. Yes. What took you so long? I think it just always does and um I, you know I do I do a sort of bit of living in between and I you know I take my time with songs like um I tend to write a ton of stuff I never stop writing and then and I never intend to make a record really it just sort of happens and it seems to happen every five years <laughs> uh, maybe it'll happen in three months again who knows you know there's I'm not a big planner did it actually take five years to make or or no it took you a couple of years to get around to the idea of it. Yeah, there was that. I had a, I had a baby, and so that that sort of took me out of the game for a while. And um, and uh, I just wanted to hang out with him, and uh, you know, um, and then and then I sort of started writing a bit again. And yeah, it's just like because I make music with my brother, it's sort of we just do stuff on and off, and it's quite a sort of natural thing. It's like we're hanging out, we're making music, and then it gets to a point where you're like, oh, there's sort of an album here, so. You have two of the biggest selling albums in history. It, does that put a, a lot of extra pressure for you when it comes no, to a new record? I don't, no, not anymore. I think on the third album, I think, was probably the only time I felt a bit of pressure and then I just sort of went, I really off-roaded <laughs> at that point. And, um, and no, I just don't feel it at all anymore. I, it feels, I just feel very lucky to sort of be getting to make the music I want to make at this point like 25 years on it sort of feels a bit surreal to me that I still get to do it you know and you're working again with your brother Rollo what's that like do you fight uh, on this record no we obviously have you know had fights in the past it tends to be about like a drum beat or you know him saying that 
me playing him a song I think is really good and him saying, nah, it's terrible. And, uh, <laughs> and then, um, But uh, on this record, we didn't actually fight. It was just really easy. I think we just sort of really understand each other now. Like, I think um, we just get on really well. We like making music the same way. It's more of an extension of sort of hanging out with people you love. And, um, and I think we both have a very similar outlook on life and feel really lucky to you know, be doing it. So huge Paul Young fan, as you mentioned. Huge. Was that because he was good looking or you? A little bit. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh, I just loved his music. It was the first album that I ever bought. And uh, No Parley? Yeah. Oh, it's just first one. Yes, uh -huh. and um, and I and I, you know, but I was that fan who went to every night at Wembley, not just one, and stood outside in the vain hope that I might meet him. I never did. You never did. Never met him. I uh might actually sort of just sink into the floor at that point. No, I mean he was just my life. You know, pictures of Paul Young everywhere, listening to his music. I just loved him. I loved his voice. There was just something about it that just. Yeah, he had such, it's sort of that light and dark in his voice that I just loved. Have you met him yet? No. Still? No. <laughs> it's you best not you? to meet you here, Rose. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Apart from today. Uh, and, uh, uh, no. <laughs> you can come on this show anytime. All right, here's Paul Young, Love of the Common People, uh, taken from his album No Parley. Uh, Love of the Common People by Paul Young, a UK number two hit in December 1983. And, and outside of music, um, what were your biggest obsessions in the 80s? Not music. I mean, it was just 80s music to me. It was sort of like, it was just everything I loved is the sounds and the melodies and the keyboards. And I think it's, you know, it's the, that was the moment that sort of, because I was, I was learning classical music and my whole life before that was I went to classical music school and that was my thing. And I listened to classical music, you know, and, and then suddenly the 80s came along and it all switched for me. And it just became like every time I went out, it was to, you know, either to a gig or to a club. And it was just, it was all about music for me. And um, yeah, I don't really know what else I was into apart from that. <laughs> Did you used to dress up? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I dressed up as Boy George quite a bit, and we all did. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there was a long phase of that. And, um, yeah, that I had, I really, see, my hair belongs in the 80s, really. It doesn't look like it now because it's tame. I have, like, absolutely crazy hair. And everyone that knows me well is always just like, you know, if the 80s came back, your hair would finally make sense. But um, yeah, I think I just, that was my era. But that was an 80s thing. Everybody had wild hair. I mean, no, I, I've still I, got it, unfortunately. Oh, you oh, yeah. No, it's still like that. It's just I, I control it. You should, you should, have, should have let it <laughs> I out. I should just let, you should it have go. let it out. Exactly. For this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done, given everyone a real fright. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next video we're going to play is by George Michael. And uh, you mentioned yeah. you, you were at the final Wham concert yeah. earlier. Um, when did you discover George? Oh, I don't remember. I just like, just, they were huge for me. Like, um, and just his voice and the songs and, oh, I just think he's amazing. And I met him much, much later um, in a studio once. And that, really, you know, what a lovely guy, like truly lovely guy. And um, he was, yeah just a total hero and, and uh, a brilliant, brilliant songwriter, brilliant singer. And why this particular song? It's just, you know, I'm pretty sure I had like my first slow dance to this song. What was his name? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone remember? <laughs> like, I remember mine. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what he was wearing. He was what? wearing a white tracksuit. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And where were you? Yeah, braces. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what braces on his? No, 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 braces on, on his, teeth. his teeth. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, what a song! Brilliant song. Yeah, and this one never gets boring. Still right. listen to it now. From the summer of 1984, here's George with his debut solo hit, "Careless Whisper." So, as you said, by the time you were a teenager, you were a, a classically trained musician. Was it was it your idea to go to music school, or did your yes. parents? No, no, they were a bit like, I don't know, you know, why is she doing that, sort of. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think that there was no sort of history of it in the family of sort of the, doing music and stuff. So I think it was sort of like, no, I just, I don't remember a life without it. Like, it's just what I always loved. And I would just play music all evening and, you know, sort of, yeah, I just don't remember a time without it. When, when did you start writing songs for yourself? Uh, I wrote the first one sort of complete song when I was about nine, sort of eight or nine. What was it called? 
it was um well it's funny actually i was trying to remember what the title was because the title was really weird like um sort of parisian or something but the song <laughs> bore no relation to the title um, <laughs> it was all about sort of having to be good to people and you know it's very mm. important <laughs> It was a nine-year-old a, a theme which you're yeah. continuing, of course, with the, the, the new record. Um, your fourth choice is uh, by Madonna. Yes. I mean, hugely influential to so many guests that have been on this show. Yes. And, and so many of them have chosen Madonna track. But funnily enough, everyone's chosen a different one. Is that? That's yeah. right. Well, that says, a lot, that says a lot for her, I reckon. That's just how many songs have influenced us. So your choice is uh, Papa Don't Preach. Yes. Uh, why this song? Why Madonna? She's just amazing. At first I thought, oh, you know, I'm sure everyone chooses Madonna, but she's such a huge influence, I think, you know, of, of that era. Like, you can't sort of not include her. And for me, that song, I just loved it. I like the story aspect. I think the video is brilliant. I didn't have a TV growing up, but I saw that video and, and it really sort of struck me. And, um, and then I did dress like her for quite a long time after that. And, uh, and occasionally still do, according to my husband. He's like... <laughs> Going down the other day, and he was like, "You're dressed like the Papa Don't Preach video," <laughs> you know. It's like, and I cut my hair off, and I dyed it blonde, and I did the did the whole thing. But but I just love the sort of the way she could sort of tell a story with a great melody and just sort of brilliant production, and and just her, she's amazing. She's just like a force of nature. She's brilliant. And listen, thank you very much for being with us Total today. Total pleasure. Before you go, you're going to be touring. Yes. When? Uh, soon. Uh, great. May. Yes. You're coming. Do. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on Thank here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll play Madonna right now and Papa Don't Preach. Thanks again to Dido. Isn't she lovely?